Considering how famous the Battle of Bannockburn is in Scottish history, you would have thought the historians would have agreed upon the exact location of the battle decades upon decades ago. Well, think again. The exact location of the battlefield has been debated for decades, but has it been found? This is the Battle of Bannockburn Visitor Centre, just south of Stirling. A major tourist attraction today, it is home to the statue of Robert the Bruce, in addition to other features. Yet despite what some may think, the battle never actually took place here. Bruce is known to have camped here shortly before the battle with his troops, a great watch point for the approaching English army. But this is not the site of the battlefield, according to most historians. In 2001, Stirling Council wanted to find out the exact location of the battle. They hired a team of historians, led by Fiona Watson, to dig through thousands of documents and explore various theories on the exact location, the precise location of the Battle of Bannockburn. Four possible locations emerged. Watson pinpointed at the dry field of Balquid Rock, where the playing fields at Bannockburn High School are today, is the most likely site where the Battle of Bannockburn took place. It's under a mile from the Battle of Bannockburn Visitor Centre, and it geographically matches the most features that were described in ancient texts, according to Watson. Watson noted that a ravine described by ancient chroniclers as an evil ditch, where English soldiers were pushed into and slain, as being part of Bluebell Woods, a local wood nearby. Do you agree with Watson, however? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What was the precise location of the Battle of Bannockburn? Now that we have a better understanding of the location of the battle, what about the battle itself? And what events caused the battle to erupt? Obviously this is a massive question, but I'll try and give you the condensed version. In the period leading up to the battle, Bruce had successfully employed guerrilla warfare tactics against English forces. In 1313, Bruce had also demanded that any supporters of the ousted King John Balliol swear loyalty to him or lose their lands. By 1314, there were only two Scottish fortresses controlled by England, one at Berwick and the other at Stirling Castle. In early 1314, Bruce's forces had agreed a deal with the English garrison inside Stirling Castle. If no English relief army was on its way by midsummer, the castle would be surrendered to Bruce. Upon hearing the news, Edward II marched the largest army to ever invade Scotland up until that point north to relieve Stirling Castle. The Battle of Bannockburn took place on the 23rd and 24th of June, 1314. The epic opening exchange set the tone for the entire episode. Robert the Bruce was at the head of his troops, leading his men to battle. Henry du Bowen, an English knight, spotted the opportunity for glory, and Charles the Bruce leading with his lance. Just as the English knight approached Bruce, the Scottish king slipped the lance and instantly propelled himself back up, smashing his axe through the English knight's skull. Energised, Scottish forces forced the English cavalry to withdraw. As the battle progressed, English attempts to outflank the Scots failed, and the Scottish infantry stood strong. Bruce had won the opening day. During the night, a Scottish noble who was serving in the English army defected to Bruce and brought him crucial intelligence, giving the Scots an edge the following day. When battle on the second day ensued, the English army failed to effectively utilise their archers, and the Scottish forces tore through the chaotic English lines as they began to disintegrate as Edward fled. Hundreds of English soldiers drowned in the burn as they desperately tried to escape the slaughter, as the Scottish force of approximately 6,000 troops triumphed. The following day, English forces in Stirling Castle surrendered to Bruce. In the aftermath of the battle, Bruce ensured that the memory of the victory was preserved, and tales of the battle were composed shortly after it finished. Robert the Bruce was in complete military control of Scotland, yet on the political side, it was a bit more nuanced. On one hand, victory in the battle helped to consolidate Robert the Bruce's hold on the crown, as some followers of the ousted king, John Balliol, switched their allegiance to Robert the Bruce, Yet domestic opposition to Bruce still remained. The reality is, 
Some Scots fought against Robert the Bruce before, during and after the Battle of Bannockburn. Bruce himself, however, remained king until his death in 1329. Before Bruce died, a short-lived peace with England was achieved, which itself only lasted five years. A year after Edward II was disposed in 1327, the first Scottish War of Independence was concluded when the Treaty of Edinburgh and Northampton was signed with England, which recognised Scotland's independence and the kingship of Robert the Bruce. The Second Scottish War of Independence soon followed, but this will be the subject of a future video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this work through Patreon and get ad free content, donate through PayPal or buy me a coffee. All the links are in the description below. Please also tell your friends and family about this channel and subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.